Football season is fast approaching, and you've come to the right place to get all your Troy Trojans football news right here on the Trojan Sports Now Football Preview Show. Trojan Sports Now. Welcome back. You know what time it is. It's game time. I'm Danielle Percival here with your breakdown of the Troy Trojans as we get ready for the 2012 football season. Starting at the top, now we're going higher than even Larry Blakeney on this one. Carl Benson, commissioner of the Sunbelt Conference, was in town over the weekend, stopped by at Media Day, and had a statement or two to make. For you that, uh, that followed the music scene back in the mid-80s, uh, a song came out that, uh, that was uh, said... Uh, uh, the future's so bright, you've got to wear shades, and uh, so that's part of my part of my statement today here. And and so uh, I'll replace my glasses with my sunglasses here for at least a little bit. So now you know what uh, what the, the message was here today. And uh, again, uh, uh, subtle as it may be, or or as strong as it may be, uh, I really believe that the future of the Sun Belt is is very very bright. Thanks for the warning, Commish. What Benson is referring to is conference realignment, which has been huge in college football this offseason. During the last several months, there have been, there have been winners and losers uh, in this whole conference reshuffling and conference realignment. Uh, institutions have, have won, some institutions have lost. Uh, some conferences have won, some conferences have lost. However, at the end of the day, I think, in my opinion, the Sun Belt has been a winner as has Troy University been a winner as part of the Sun Belt in, in all this. The changes in the Sun Belt Conference will not take place this season, but North Texas and Florida International will be leaving the conference, and Georgia State, Texas State, and UT Arlington will be added. Speaking of the conference, let's go ahead and take a look at the preseason poll. Four teams rank in front of the Trojans, meaning Troy was tabbed at number five, dead in the middle of the conference. At the top are the four conference teams Troy will be facing at home this season, with Florida International expected to win the conference. We'll have a detailed breakdown of the schedule later in the show. But hey, it's just preseason. No one really knows how things will play out till the boys hit the field. We've heard from the commissioner. Now let's get to the head man, Larry Blakeney, and his assessment of where the team stands heading into the 2012 season. You know, I'm excited about this team. I, we're not there yet, folks. We ain't close. We got... We, we're, but I think we are, we are better as a team. We understand team better than we have in a while. And don't forget our schedule. You know, we're, we're playing six home games. Over in the SEC, they play eight home games and a one double A every year. We're playing six home games. This happens to be that Mississippi State and Navy is included in that six, and the four top teams in our league last year are in that six. So... Uh, you know, you better, you better tie it on tight when you come in here and get, get behind this football team because we're going to have some good folks across the field from us every time. Troy fans, it's going to be a tough home schedule like you just heard from Coach Blakeney, and crowd support is always important. But if there's one word that could ease your mind, it might be this one. Depth, 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 depth is key. Think you've got it? According to these coaches, depth is an important part of the 2012 Trojans. Then the biggest thing is depth, you know, being able to have guys. You know, you're not playing with 11 or 12. you got opportunity to play with potentially 22, 24, 26 guys. You can roll in and out and uh, be more productive throughout the game, and that's going uh, to be big. But why is depth so important? It's not necessarily about the number of veterans. It's about having the bodies going to be very big, especially early games, hot ball games. You know, you, you're going to get beat down by the sun and people are going to get tired early. Their nerves are up. So you, you better be able to have some guys to spin in there and spin out. And uh, we, uh, we feel better about that than we have in a long time. Over the years, depth has become increasingly significant with the pace the game of football is being played at. Teams that are playing faster and faster and faster, you've got you to gotta be able to play some guys. And, We've not done that, hadn't been able to do that very much in the last couple of three years. With the game, the way it's played right now, with the speed of the game, number of snaps you got to play, you better have more than 11 who can play for you. 
Being in this conference, you know, we play a lot of spread teams, a lot of teams that want to get in at least 70-plus snaps. Um, you know, having somebody to come in so you can catch a breath, you know, that's going to that's gonna help you a lot. If you're fresh and you out there and you know what to do and you're thinking, you, you know you're going to play your hardest and you're going to give it to all, knowing that you have somebody to come in and, you know, won't miss a step, won't miss a play. Depth isn't just something that happens overnight. It is a continual process of building up current players and also recruiting new guys. It's something that we have uh, got to continue to try to develop. And uh, we've got to, as all the coaches that I heard, bringing, bringing some guys on to help fill depth or, or, or maybe, maybe even take, take a position, you know, earn your starting job. Uh, and uh, we got some guys that uh, have uh, shown that they're interested in being uh, in the rank and file of the guys that play on Saturday. As Blakeney alluded to, depth also breeds competition. You know, having having more guys creates competition. You know, for for snaps, for plays. You know, how many reps you gonna get? Well, based on how you play. You know, you you ain't you ain't the guy. You competing with other people to be the guy. There have been several new players, including transfers and even freshmen, who have entered fall camp and are challenging for playing time. You could tell from our first meeting uh, when they walked in the room. Those other guys sat up and they took notice. I mean, when they walk in the room and they walk on the field, that competition starts and competition makes them all better. When you got a guy that can push, you know, push for playing time, the other guys step up or they get left behind. Well, we're just getting into the breakdown of the team, so when we get back, we'll have a look at the offense and a couple new players who made coming to Troy a family affair. All that and more is ahead, so stick around here on the Trojan Sports Now football preview show. At the heart of what we do in the College of Business is care for the student. It's a personal thing with the students. We feel like the students are our most important uh, asset, our most important uh, uh, products. I have never been anywhere where I've known so many students on first name basis. They stop by socially to talk to us. So we understand who our students are and we're trying to help them be better in their areas of professional work. My colleagues and I work together to create programs that our students need. What we try to do at Troy University is provide an experience to students that not only provide the curriculum that allows them to be successful in the business world, but we also try to expand their horizons to reach greater opportunities that maybe they didn't think they were capable of before. Trojan Sports Now. All right, let's jump in and start breaking down the 2012 Troy Trojans. First up, calling an audible. Offense, let's get the play in. You never know what you've got till you hit the field. But this season, Coach Kenny Edenfield is expecting a lot from his offensive players because they've come out willing to work. The main thing is the group of guys we got. We have got some guys that want to do what we ask them to do, and they are really pressing. Uh, they're trying to do everything we can, and as soon as we can get a group that can practice together for a period of time, uh, I think we're going to really get to gelling. But we have a better group of guys as far as numbers than we've had in a long time, so that's encouraging because usually depth catches you as the season goes on, so we're really excited about that. There were some highlights offensively at the scrimmage on Media Day, including this touchdown pass from Deion Anthony to transfer Chris Williams. Starting quarterback Corey Robinson said despite a slow start in the scrimmage, the offense is about to turn the corner. I definitely feel like, you know, we got about a week or week or so left before we actually, you know, get going offensively, gelling wise and, you know, them them knowing what to do and, you know, me knowing where they're gonna be at. And, you know, I, I definitely think we have time before the UAB game to to get to that point, I definitely think we're going to get there. With the beginning of the season still two weeks away, Edenfield is confident the players will be ready in time for the first battle. When it's all said and done at the end of camp, we're going to have some guys we can go to war with, and they will give us everything we got, and we're really excited about that as an offensive staff. And uh, we're going to continue every day just to keep pressing. We're going to keep pushing them hard every day, and eventually, as we get going, their legs will get back under them, we'll get sharp, and we'll be ready to go against UAB that first ball game. And until that first game in Birmingham, one of the most important areas for Corey Robinson and the offense to work on is timing. In 2010, it was Jarrell Jernigan. 
Last year, the leading receiver was Eric Thomas, but there were several targets in the receiving core. This season for Corey Robinson, it's not about chemistry with one receiver, it's about the entire offense. Our offense is so much different, you know, than, than a lot of offenses that you see, you know, playing, but I definitely feel like we, we go to so many different guys, you know, every day and during a game, we, you know, we can throw it up to 15, 16 guys I think I've hit, you know, during a single game. So it's not, it's not about a chemistry with one guy, it's about finding it, you know, as an offense. In order for the offense to click, it all starts with Robinson, who Coach Sean Reagan says has improved this offseason. Corey Robinson, his fundamentals are night and day to where they were this time last year. His pocket presence is much better. There was a lot of hard work, you know, this spring and this summer that, you know, we've all put in. And, you know, me and Coach Reagan have really worked hard, you know, at me being a better quarterback personally, you know, and, you know, helping the team out, not just, you know, individual stuff. And that's really what I'm all about. Is, you know, getting back to the land tradition around here. With the quarterback situation decided, it's all about being able to get the ball to the right guy. Uh, we'll do a good job of getting the guys who can make plays the ball. As a staff, we'll, we'll figure that out. Our quarterback will figure that out, and we'll be able to do that. There's no doubt in my mind. We'll get the guys who can make big plays the ball when we need to. I like our group of guys. If we can stay healthy and, and uh, understand it's a team sport and the ball's not always going to come your way, you're going to have to have to block every now and then. And, and uh, be a team player, I, I think we, we have a chance to have a pretty good crew of receivers. Another important aspect of the offense is the running backs. All the backs who had significant playing time last year are returning, and Coach Jeff Beckel says his group is ready for action. They all do different things, you know, and, and it's funny uh, because, uh, you know, once we get into the season, they kind of know what they're good at. But the one thing about them, they all they all understand that it's a, it's a full backfield, and they, they really are. Uh, pull for each other when they're in there. Last year we was ranked, you know, probably 100 and something in the nation that's run. So we're trying to uh, get that high. You know, we know we got to take the uh, load off court a little bit, so we're going to have to be able to run the football this year. And an important factor in being able to run the ball this year is the offensive line. This is one unit of the team that normally gets no credit and all the blame, but they do have some good leadership on the line this year. If the quarterback is the most important part of the offense, what can be said about the offensive line? They're the ones who take all the hits and protect the quarterback, after all. And Corey Robinson might be able to breathe a little easier with the group he's got in front of him this year. As a line, I think um, our aggression is there and everything, but it's coming together as a group um, where we'll have one, player, one person on the line um, well, he might miss a block or this another person might miss a block, but if we can get it all together as five guys going at once and doing everything right, I think it's very close. We're just one step away right now. One of the most crucial parts of the offense clicking is having the O-line ready for action. And in preparation, this group has gotten close not only on the field, but also off the field. We've come together as a group. Uh, in years past, I think we've kind of been separate and more individual, but now we're very close together on and off the field and I wouldn't hesitate to call anyone of the, of the linemen and ask them for anything because I know I can count on them. O-line's just not five different positions. The O-line's a group as a whole. I think we've really got that this offseason that, you know, if one person messes up, then, you know, the whole O-line is off. So we've all got to play together. We've all got to be on the same page. Despite the loss of tackle James Brown, this group still has an experienced leader to rely on. Kyle Wilborn is really the big vocal leader. I mean, everybody looks up to him. I mean, he's been here for five years. He started, you know, pretty much every game he's played in here. So, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He knows the ropes. He knows what's expected, and everybody looks up to him. He plays the game the way you're looking for an offensive lineman to play the game. I mean, if he, if he played 30 years ago, he'd fit in just, just right, you know, because he's tough, smart, physical, um, you know, all those intangibles, along with a lot of athletic ability and talent to go with it. Coming to college can be overwhelming for a normal student, much less a student athlete. But when you make the transition with someone you know, it can make it a little easier. Two freshmen on this year's squad have come into fall camp and made an immediate impact. Wide receiver Michael Lindsay and running back Brandon Verks. But the transition from high school to college ball isn't an easy one. Everything is fast. High school is not that fast, so I got to get used to the fast pace. And once I get used to running the routes, I think I'll be very comfortable and get back to my old self as I, as I did in high school. The plays are coming. You know, I just got to get used to, you know, uh, the game the game speed. You know, high school, coming from high school to college is, is totally different. You know, uh, you know, uh, 
the plays, the plays are coming. You know, coaches teaching me. You know, um, I'm trying to discipline myself. You know, I'm trying to take the playbook home. For Lindsey, he says learning the playbook isn't the hardest part of college football. In the playbook is is very similar to what I did in high school. On things, just it's a bunch of signals. We didn't have a lot of signals and. And Troy's like a couple guys that's giving a signal, so you have to really run on the field and watch the guy that's giving a signal, so that's pretty challenging for me right now. While these two might share the field at some point, they've got a special connection off the field. Brandon, my cousin, we room, we roommates together, and like every day we wake up, both of us, we know we freshmen, they're um, expecting a lot out of us, so we got to push it together. And I mean, it's fun being here with him, because I know he can make plays and I can make plays. It's great, you know. Um, we be in a room, we study together because we came here at the same time, you know, uh, learning. You know, we got the playbook together, we'll sit there. It's a habit now, you know, if you sit here in the room eating, and then he just, I just call him a play, and then he'll, he'll call out his route or something, and he'll do the same for me, you know. And it's every day just being with that same person, you know, being with a team, you know, you function better, you know, uh, and that's what we're trying to get you to, to do. Brooks has made an impression on the offensive staff and could be seeing playing time early in the season. Brandon showed some great signs. Um, you know, we're not big into red shirt and anybody. We're going to use everybody we can use. Um, you know, that's a deep backfield, but one thing he's done this fall camp is he's shown he's got some explosiveness. He's got great vision. He can catch the ball extremely well. So I think he's putting some pressure on some guys, and we'll just have to see how it plays out. You know, he'll hit the hole. And, uh, you know, like I said, and, and, you know, he'll burst. He's another one that's hard to bring down. Well, we've looked at the offense, so when we get back, we'll dig into the defense and special teams. That's ahead along with a preview of the schedule and a look at the Trojans' first game against the Blazers in Birmingham. Stay tuned to the Trojan Sports Now football preview show. I have fallen in love with social work, and I think I finally found my niche and what I'm good at and what I can go far in in life. As soon as I started athletic training, I fell in love with it. Troy University's College of Health and Human Services prepares students for high-demand careers of today and tomorrow. Careers offering attractive pay and the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others. My courses aren't just classwork. I've worked with the Department of Human Resources to put my skills to work with helping people. With bachelor's and advanced degrees in athletic training, sport and fitness management, nursing, human services, rehabilitation and social work, health education, and physical education, all of Troy's College of Health and Human Services programs are nationally accredited, and our helpful faculty is dedicated to quality and student success. As long as you're willing to do the work, they're willing to sacrifice their time and effort to make sure that you get to your goal. We change the world. Come join us. Contact Troy University, where we educate the mind to think, the heart to feel, and the body to act. Trojan Sports Now. Moving on to the other side of the ball, the Trojans struggled on defense last season, coming in at 113th out of 120 teams. But the Trojans are looking to turn things around this year. After giving up an average of six yards per play on defense last season, defensive coordinator Jeremy Rowell knew the team had work to do and says they've been putting in the effort to make adjustments. We've made a stride or two from last year. Um, we struggled big time last year. Obviously, we're not there yet by no means, and uh, we're going to keep working every day getting better, being more physical, doing the things we got to do to be better. One of the biggest contributors last season was Jonathan Massaquan. He chose to forego his senior year and is now pursuing a career in the NFL with the Atlanta Falcons. But even with that loss on the defensive line, Coach Randy Butler says he's confident they have depth at the position. For the first time since I've been here, I, I think we've, we've got some depth, especially inside. If we had to go play today, I'd feel pretty good about playing six or seven guys, and that's, that's a bonus. But I, you know, I really feel good about our depth. Um, you know, just we got some guys got to get in shape, some guys got to figure it out and learn it. And once we do, I think we're going to be fine. Another notable name from last year's team is linebacker Canors Davis. He is returning for his senior season and will likely be a leader on the defense. Davis says he's ready to get back out there. I'm excited. I'm, I'm ready. You know, this is my last year. Um, I want to be out there with the, the people that's out there on the team. Just coming back and being able to you know, step on the field one more time with my fellow teammates, I'm, I'm very excited. After the struggles of 2011, Davis says one of the biggest changes in the offseason has been the unity of the team. You got a lot of people, you know, shaking each other's hands, you know, saying good play on both sides of the balls. You play offense, you know, offense complement the defense, defense complement the offense. So, you know, um, that, that team chemistry is going to bring a lot of more wins in, you know, along with the talent that we have. 
One position on the defense that was a concern last season was cornerbacks. Now there are several new guys stepping up to the plate and even a new coach guiding them. Julius Brown, who spent the last five seasons with the Boise State Broncos, is entering his first season as the cornerbacks coach at Troy, and he says he's giving his guys a lot to work on. I put a lot on them in terms of learning the position. Um, you know, that they'll tell you we, we do a lot of tests, and those guys are really answering the bell in terms of, you know, knowing formation and knowing calls and, and knowing our defense and being a master of the defense. You know, they're working hard. They're doing everything that... I'm asking them to do and that our staff is asking them to do. While Brown is new to his group, he also has some new players that have been added at the corner position through recruiting, including TJ Bryant, a transfer from USC. I'm really happy with TJ. You know, he's doing everything I ask him to do. He's fitting into the group well. He's competing. So far, it's been good. Everything's been good. Everybody on the team has uh, embraced me very, you know, comfortably. As far as football goes, everything, you know, just getting back into the swing of things, everything looks, seems to be going good, just listening to and doing everything that the coach is asking me. Coming from USC, Bryant will remain a Trojan, and he says the similarities don't stop with just the mascot. They're both uh, two good programs, and, you know, it's, it's still college football, you know, as far as... USC and Troy, the similarities are, you know, we kind of do the same thing. Since Bryant is somewhat familiar with the style of play, he says he could have an immediate impact. I feel like I'll be a contributor, you know, with, with, with the leaders, and I just feel like, you know, everything's just going to go smooth, and, you know, it's, it's really not too much to it. Last year, the Trojans had their main three starters on special teams returning, but this season, it's all about rebuilding. Coming into last season, special teams was one of the areas with the least concern since the Trojans returned punter Will Goggins and kicker Michael Taylor. This year, though, it's a different story. We are replacing our kicker, snapper, and punter, but we got a capable, a capable bunch of guys this year that uh, certainly have the ability to fill the shoes. The first player who touches the ball in a game is the kicker, and that's the first slot they're looking to fill. We'll continue the kicking battle for a week or so and uh, then we'll make a call on who's going to be who's going to be that guy for us. Um, really hadn't had anybody step up and, and be the clear winner at this this point. When it comes to the punter, it's looking like it's going to go from one Will to another. Will Scott, well, he's our punter, uh, backed up by Ryan K. Uh, Will's done a nice job there for us. He's a kicker and a punter, uh, which is something that, that's big for you to get. You've always got uh, depth at both positions with, with uh, a young man that can do both. The one position they do have returning guys filling is, well, returners. The kick returner from last season, Chandler Worthy, will likely see most of the action in that position, and the punt returner, Justin Albert, will be in that same role again this season. It's good to have somebody with experience back catching punts. That's, that's, a, that's a scary position. If you've never had the opportunity to do that, you really don't understand. So it's good to have a guy that has uh, intestinal fortitude like Justin back there. I love it. Um, I'm a specialist. I, I love being back deep, catching the ball, even though um, you got to have no fear back there. Uh, you got 11 guys running down at you full speed, so you got to be aware sometimes. So um, I, I'm very comfortable back there last year at the beginning of the season, a couple jitters, but, but now um, I feel like I'm a veteran back there and, and just, just do what I do. We've dissected just about everything about this team, so now let's check out the opponents. It's time to look at the 2012 Troy Trojans schedule. First up, UAB. The Trojans and the Blazers will square off in Birmingham on September 1st with an early kick, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Second week of the season, the Trojans have their first home game on Larry Blakeney Field 2.0. That's right, the new turf will be broken in on September 8th against Louisiana Lafayette. That will be the Trojans' conference and home opener and is scheduled for a 6 o'clock kick. Then come September 15th, history will be made. For the first time ever, Troy will face an SEC team at home. I'm not counting Missouri since they weren't a part of the conference in 2004. The Mississippi State Bulldogs come to town for an evening game the third week of the season. Then it's back on the road to Denton, Texas to take on North Texas on September 22nd with another kickoff scheduled for 6 o'clock. On the 29th, for the first time, Troy will take on South Alabama in Mobile at 2.30. Then comes a little changeup. The Trojans have two weekends off, but that's because of a Thursday night matchup against Western Kentucky, and it's at home. On October 11th, the Trojans and the Hilltoppers will take the field at Veterans Memorial Stadium at 6.30 with the game airing on ESPNU. Halfway through the schedule now. October 20th, the Trojans will play host to the team picked as the preseason conference favorite Florida International. 
It's a good thing it starts cooling down in October because this one has a noon kickoff. On the 27th, Troy will take on the other Florida team of the Sun Belt, Florida Atlantic, this time on the road. They'll continue their road trip the following weekend when they travel to Knoxville on November 3rd to take on their second SEC team of the season in Tennessee. Troy will have back-to-back non-conference games facing Tennessee, then the midshipmen come to Troy. The game against Navy will be on November 10th with a 2.30 start. Then the final home game, Senior Day as well as Homecoming, will be against Arkansas State, the conference champion from a season ago. Homecoming will be on November 17th with the game scheduled to begin at 2.30. And we finally reach the end, starting the year off with a rivalry game, ending it with 1-2. The battle for the Palladium is in Murfreesboro, Tennessee this year. Troy and Middle Tennessee hit the field on November 24th in the Trojans' final game of the season. Well, there's only one thing left to do, hit the field. On September 1st, the Trojans begin their season against an in-state rival, the UAB Blazers. So what better way to wrap up the show than with a preview of the first game? UAB is the most important game we've ever played right now. Coming off a season that only featured three victories, it's important to start the year off the right way. The kickoff of the 2012 season for the Trojans will be in Birmingham on September 1st. And if you want to tailgate before the game, you'll have to be up early. It's going to be 11 o'clock. And, uh, you know, we can make 11 o'clock our game time or UAB can make their 11 o'clock their game time. Last season, Troy began the year 0-2 facing tough competition in Clemson and Arkansas. But despite a disappointing year, linebacker Canoris Davis says the team is ready for redemption. Everybody coming out with great energy, everybody coming out and they want to do it. And they want to be here because, you know, I think the three and nine year, it kind of um, kind of woke a lot of people up, and I think we needed that. We don't even talk about last year anymore. That's, you know, that's in the past for us, uh, you know, three and nine. It's, it's, it's just terrible to think about. We, we hated every minute of it, and we're, uh, we're very, very excited about getting out and going to Birmingham to play UAB. The only thing that means anything is September 1, September 1. And that's what our, that's what our target is, UAB. Full speed ahead. In last year's game, the Trojans scored 10 points in the final six minutes of the game to edge UAB by one point, 24 to 23. In the past two meetings, it's come down to the wire and it could happen again. But who knows? With it being the first game, there is still a lot of uncertainty about both teams. It'll be an adjustment game probably for us because we don't know a lot about them. We know where they come from and what they've done in the past, where they came from. We know what UAB has done, but we don't know what to culmination of all that will be in Birmingham, so we'll have to be ready for a lot of different things. Troy may not know what to expect from the Blazers team, but dealing with the blazing heat is at the front of these players' minds. It's going to be a hot game, we know that, so um, you know we just got to um, you know hydrate ourselves, take care of ourselves, uh, work hard, you know do all we can do to get better to that point, and then um, you know let the game speak for itself. We've broken down the team, analyzed the aspects of the game, heard from the coaches. Now it's just time to sit back, relax, and get the tailgating supplies packed because football season is less than two weeks away. We'll kick off the fall season of Trojan Sports now beginning Thursday, August 30th as we get ready for the first football game. I'm Danielle Percival. Thanks for watching, and as always, go Trojans! Trojan Sports Now.